the Airbnb group I was staying with kicked me out of a bed so a cooler guy could sleep in it, but they forgot I was their only ride home, so I left them stranded in the mountains to remind them about respect. Posted by you slash Colton 011000. I, 22M, and my friend from college, 27M, were invited on a backpacking trip organized by a friend of his, whom he had met while backpacking in Colorado the year before. The girl, Kaylee, 25F, who organized the trip, had booked an Airbnb for all of us to stay the night after we got off the trail from a three-day trek. There was room for two people in each of the two beds, and room for two on the pull-out couch. We all paid evenly for the Airbnb. Of course, we thought Kaylee should have priority for a bed since she had done all the planning, and there was a BF slash GF couple as part of the six of us planning to stay in the Airbnb. So naturally, my friend and I felt we should take the pull-out couch, and this is how it was settled before we ever started the trip. However, midway through the trek, the couple had to turn around and head home. So now, there would only be four people staying at the Airbnb, and naturally, or so we thought, my friend and I assumed we would now sleep in a real bed. Along with the couple backing out, my friend and I became the only ride for Kaylee and the other guy, Tyler, to get back to the airport in Denver. After dropping them off, my friend and I would have a 14-hour drive back. Tyler is a relatively passive character in this story, as he didn't speak up much for either side and was already designated to share the bed, platonically, with Kaylee, so you won't hear much mention of him. So, when we arrived at the Airbnb, my friend and I set our things next to the real bed that Kaylee hadn't taken and took a cat nap on it. Enter. Chris Fisher. Kaylee had invited her friend Chris Fisher to come hang out for the night. Chris lived in Colorado, only a couple of hours away from where we were, and was apparently a celebrity of sorts in her circle. So, Chris came in, said hi to Kaylee and Tyler, and was briefly introduced to me and my friend, responding with a simple what's up to the introduction. Chris then started chatting with Kaylee and Tyler while my friend and I went into the room to organize our luggage. Suddenly, we heard Chris say, I need a shower, and he walked into the room without a word to us, plopped his stuff at the foot of our bed rummaged for his toiletries, and hopped in the shower. After Chris got out of the shower, the group started talking about going out for beers that evening. But knowing we had a 14-hour drive ahead of us the next day after dropping Kaylee and Tyler off at the airport, I told them I was going to stay back and get some sleep. Chris had left his bag on the bed, so I moved it to the counter in the living room so he wouldn't forget it. According to my friend, he spent the entire evening in Grand Lake with the biggest douche he had ever encountered. Fisher couldn't stop talking about the obscure world records he had broken or set in the world-renowned sport of ridge running, including his records for the most elevation gain in a day by repeatedly going up and down a particular mountain. Kaylee was apparently eating it up, utterly starstruck. If you've seen the movie The Other Guys and remember how everyone reacted to The Rock and Sam Jackson's characters, that was exactly Kaylee's demeanor, according to my friend. After returning from the soul-sucking outing, my friend was more than ready to bid Mr. Fisher adieu and never see his face again. Unfortunately, that's not what happened. Kaylee was furious that I was still in the bed. She wanted Chris to have it and brought up the fact that my friend and I were originally designated for the pull-out couch. My friend stood up for us, arguing that not only did it make sense for us to take the real bed since it was now available, but also that Fisher hadn't contributed anything for the trip. We weren't even told until the last minute that he was coming, and most importantly, I was already asleep in the bed. Kaylee was apparently refusing to have it any other way and wouldn't stop hammering the issue. Finally, Tyler came and woke me up to sleep on the pull-out. It was around midnight, and we needed to be out by 6 a.m. I stumbled into the kitchenette in a sleepy stupor. This is where I got a real taste of the douche that is Chris Fisher. For two hours, in the kitchenette just eight feet away from the couch Kaylee insisted we sleep on, my friend and I had to sit and listen to Kaylee and Fisher drone on about their outdoor adventure prowess. They kept boasting about how great they were at skiing, snowboarding, and setting fastest known times on trails. I had no idea until that moment that vacation activities could be such a flex, but they proved that one could make them their entire personality and the pinnacle of their life's accomplishments. Looking back, I should have chimed in about how I hiked the Matterhorn in Europe, but they probably would have countered with how they went to Europe too, only harder. My friend was staring at me, seething. He hated that they woke me up, hated that they kicked us out of our bed, and hated the added insult of them having the audacity to chat for two more hours right next to where we were supposed to be sleeping. About an hour and a half in, as he continued to seethe, he subtly gestured for me to check my phone. I opened it and read, let's ditch these pricks. As soon as they finally headed to bed, we promptly agreed that Chris Fisher, by taking our place in the bed, had unwittingly taken his place as their ride to Denver. We grabbed our packs by the door and set out for Oklahoma at 3 a.m. sharp. Were we the jerks here? Chris finds and shows up in the comments. This is pretty funny, especially the part where you actually still drove them to the airport. You did an excellent job manipulating this story, Tanner. Commenter responds to Chris. Bro, with how much you love yourself, why haven't you put a ring on it? You seem like you could be pretty chill, but damn, you let your personal achievements rule your personality. Do you have other hobbies? I have a close friend who sounds a lot like you, every day he updates me on his personal best cycling time or distance. It's cool you love what you do, but why do you have a personal website listing all these weird achievements? Are you planning to compete in the Olympics someday? 
Sorry for the verbal diarrhea, I'm genuinely curious. Chris responds. Since you're curious, I do love myself, just like you should love yourself. But I'm a paid professional mountain athlete, so it's literally my job to post about what I do in the mountains. Personally, I hate social media and wish I didn't have to be on it, but again, it's my job, and I love climbing, skiing, and running around the mountains. So, I'll keep doing my thing. People who actually know me would speak very differently than this op. It's honestly pretty hilarious that he came up with this whole story. Anyway, hope I answered your question. Have a great evening. Update one day later. So there was indeed some embellishment. Chris asked for this, so no one blamed me for making him and Kaylee look even worse. Everything in this story is true, except for the part about us actually leaving. My friend tried to talk me into it, but I said it was too mean, even in response to what they had done to us. I couldn't bear the thought of leaving someone hours away from where they needed to be, though my friend insisted Fisher would surely be a reliable ride to the airport. In reality, we had told them, when we agreed to be their ride to the airport, that this would require us to leave very early that morning because my friend and I were cutting it close to make it back to Oklahoma in one stretch so he could attend his 6 p.m., central time, class that evening. So, even after being treated like dirt, even after they slept in and lollygagged all morning, causing us to leave about two hours later than we needed to, we still drove an hour out of our way to take Kaylee and Tyler to the airport. As a result, we ended up being too late for his class. We called friends and family all day to pick their brains about whether we would have been wrong, as I maintained, to leave them, or if we should have, as my friend insisted, left Kaylee and Tyler high and dry. We got mixed reviews on that. We had completely forgotten about the whole scenario until today, while driving to another new adventure and reading Am I the Jerk posts, as we love to do on our car rides. That's when we realized this story would be perfect for this forum. Of course, we weren't posting in a forum called Would I Hypothetically Have Been the Jerk If I Had Done the Thing I Thought to Do But Was Too Nice to Actually Do, so we had to add the alternate ending we've always wondered about. So, sorry for embellishing, Chris, but I'm not sure how the reality paints you in any better light. The truth sets us free, I suppose. Commenter. You're the jerk for not leaving them there and making me read this update, lol.